but we're just gonna have cars, right? So, just... hey everybody, welcome back to Morning Watch. Today we're talking about a story of courage and standing up in times when it might be pretty difficult to do it. Let's get into it. All throughout scripture, God makes many promises. Promises to be with us, to love us, to work through us and in us in many incredible ways. And it takes a lot of courage to believe in and follow these promises. And one of these beautiful stories of courage is from the book of Daniel in the Old Testament. And it's of the story of these four young men, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel. And these four young men are from a tribe in Israel called Judah. And Judah one day is attacked by a neighboring uh, region called Babylon. And King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon comes in and takes all of these young men from the, the region of Judah into exile back to Babylon to train to be in his court, in the king's court. And the king's court involves training and studying literature, learning new languages, and then being sent out to be governors or justices or lawmakers or all these different kinds of things all throughout the land. And Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel, while they're training to be on the king's court, they know and remember God's promises many different times uh, to be with them and to love them and that they are men who can stand up with courage when those times are required. And one day, King Nebuchadnezzar has a dream and he sends out into the land, he sends his chief servant into the land to find someone, uh, a, a vision interpreter, someone who can interpret dreams to come back and tell him what this dream means. He finds no one who can do it. In fact, everyone who comes back says, King Nebuchadnezzar, give it up. You're never gonna be able to understand this dream. It doesn't mean anything. Daniel, however, has been given a special understanding and wisdom by God be, uh, in being able to interpret dreams. And he hears of King Nebuchadnezzar's search to uh, understand this dream, and so he goes to the chief servant and says, I can, I can interpret this dream. Take me to King Nebuchadnezzar. And so he goes to King Nebuchadnezzar, and King Nebuchadnezzar tells him that, that the dream was of uh, this big, tall statue that was made out of iron and brass and steel and all these different, uh, these different metals and, and materials. And one day the statue is torn limb from limb and it's, it's turned into dust and it is no more. And of course, he's kind of alarmed and, and uh, confused by this dream. And Daniel, remembering the wisdom that God has given him and the promise to, to be a man of courage and, and to go into things in a courageous way, tells the king, 
news that the king might not want to hear, and that's that King Nebuchadnezzar, this dream is about you. And this dream is saying that one day you too will, will follow the way of, of, of the dust and be taken down and destroyed as many kings before you have been. That is the way it is. And King Nebuchadnezzar uh, doesn't react violently or anything. He's actually surprised and, and grateful for Daniel interpreting this dream for him. And so he commissions a statue of his own to be made in real life. And it's this golden statue and it's, it's really, really big. It's 60 cubits by 60 cubits, which is about 90 feet tall by 90 feet wide. And he sets it out on this plain for all of the governors and the kings and the magistrates and everyone to come and worship. And because of their place in the king's court, he had sent out Shedrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be governors themselves uh, all throughout the land. And so they too come back to uh, this, this commencement of this golden statue. And he, King Nebuchadnezzar stands up on the plain in front of all the people and he gives them instructions on how they are to worship the statue. It, when the stringed instruments, the harp and the lyre and the, the horned instruments like the trumpet, when they sound, you are to fall to your knees and worship this statue. And if you don't, you will be thrown into a fiery furnace. Oof. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego hear this news and they too remember God's promises to stand with courage. See, they worshiped God as the King of Kings and, and they, they knew and remembered God's instructions all throughout uh, history, the history of the Israelites, to not worship images, uh, to not worship other gods, but to only worship God, uh, the King of Kings. And so they, they know that this is not something they're going to do and they know there's consequences for it. And that takes courage. And when the instruments play, everyone falls to their knees except Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And King Nebuchadnezzar notice them, notices them and gives them one more chance. And again, they refuse. They protest and say, we will not do it. And and after King Nebuchadnezzar gives them that chance, they, they actually say this in such a courageous way. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver, to deliver us from the fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. This infuriates King Nebuchadnezzar, and he orders his strongest men to come and bind up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them in the fiery furnace to build it seven times hotter than they've ever built it. And so the men throw them into the fire, the fiery furnace, and King Nebuchadnezzar steps back and looks into the furnace and sees the men there in the fires unharmed. And as he looks even closer, it appears that there's a fourth person in the fire. And so he, he asks his chief servant, was it not three people that I threw in? And he says, it was. And as he looks even closer, he notices that it, it seems to be a godlike figure, something divine in and among uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he realizes at once that this is the God that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego have followed out of exile, have followed as they refuse to eat the royal wine and eat the royal food. And they, uh, this is the God that they followed when they protested and refused to bow down in front of the statue. And he is in awe. And I think what's so wonderful and what's such good news about this story is that these young men heard the promises of God from the beginning. And even when it got tough and challenging, they still stood with courage and remembered God's promise that they are loved and they are okay. This is the kind of courage that we hope to instill in our campers when they're here at Rockmont. And we hope to send home with them as well. And they do it again and again. It's incredibly encouraging to see. We're so grateful for each one of you. Be well.